the Mortal Yogi podcast with me, Dougal Meacham. Hi, Lucy. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Good, yeah. Uh, so you are quite interesting. Do you think so? It's <laughs> <laughs> an interesting Interesting. Question. So tell, interesting, a, yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself. You are, you are British. You are English, is that correct? I prefer British. I you're think, prefer but, British. Yeah, I was born so in England. Yeah. You're born in England, but Scotland of what? Scotland for nine years. Scotland for nine years. Are your parents English? Yes. They yeah. Are. But so, yeah. what's with the not you're not English thing? <laughs> I don't know. I just. Oh, you're you're, a bit you're, more you're interesting. It's a bit more interesting. Mm. Uh huh. And yeah. so, where were you born? I was born in England, in Suffolk, southeast Suffolk. England. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, very rural, very different to Edinburgh. Oh, because so you're a country girl. <laughs> I am a country girl. Okay. Yeah, I grew up next to a pig farm. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. How did that smell? Surrounded by fields. How did that smell? Pretty, pretty ripe most of the time. Really? Because I almost bought a house. Um, my first house I almost bought was almost on a pig farm. And the day before we almost bought it, the real estate agent came and said, don't buy it because it's going to smell. Uh, uh, yeah, it yeah, it did smell. Yeah? Is yeah, that it was actually a pig the farm, case? And it was quite a small country road that we lived on. It's yeah. like typical English, you imagine it, it's like that. But every now and then a pig would escape and walk down the road <laughs> and you'd see the neighbour come along and go, have you seen my pig? Yeah? Yeah, when that Like how big, how big is a farming pig? It's fairly big. Yeah, like, it's like bigger than a... Like a metre and a half? That's a that, metre and a half. Is that two metres? Yeah, and fairly quite wide. Yeah, so it's a porkable, porkable pig. Porkable pig if you're yeah. not vegetarian. Or yeah. bacon, yeah. <laughs> Wow, okay, so that's... Yeah, it's um, been run down the road. Um, but then it got gentrified, I think. Okay. Suffolk is a kind of... It's, it's like one step removed from London, so I think uh-huh. initially it was all very rural farming, but now there's a lot of um, sort of nice, nice country home people. Like nice, are. nice, but they live in London, really? Or they well, they do London. live in London, or they have lived in London, or that area. Okay. And they've gone out and said... I think that looks like a really horrible place. I'm going to convert into a nice and <laughs> so it's become commas. green wellies and, <laughs> yes, and, sw- and horses and, and horses. Yes. No more pigs. Oh, not that I know of. I no. Know. Okay. No, I'm sure there are pigs. So you grew up uh, there, nice breathing fresh air, <laughs> ish, fresh ish, yeah, fresh air. Fresh air. And yeah. then uh, you moved to Scotland nine years ago. Mm, not quite that straightforward. I think when I was 18, I moved. Uh, I went travelling for a year, so as soon as I finished school, I the year off. ran for the hills yeah. and went to New Zealand and Southeast Asia and India and places. Um, and then I worked for a year yeah. in the Isles of Scilly, which is down off Cornwall, mm-hmm. just this bonkers little island where wow. <laughs> you'd work really hard and then... Farming again? <laughs> no, I no. I was in a hotel. Uh, okay. Typical waitressing job. Yeah. Work hard. Then go out and drink quite a lot in the evenings. Okay. And then get up the next morning and do it. <laughs> it's just... This sounds like a, <laughs> a classic uh, British uh, youth. Yeah, I suppose w- so. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So I did that for a year and mm-hmm. then I moved to um, the Lake District to do my undergrad degree. Okay. Um, so I was there for three years. Yeah. Doing outdoor, it's called outdoor studies. Like outdoor studies. Outdoor what does that education. mean? Outdoor education. Outdoor, so high, what, te- learning to teach people to... Yeah, learning climbing and yeah. sailing and all those sorts of things. But it was also, um, I suppose I was quite quite academic at school, so it was not a very academic course. Um, yeah. So I quite enjoyed the flip side of it, where it was... Ah, very practical, um, outdoorsy. Practical and outdoorsy. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and then... Uh, from there, are we getting to Scotland yet? So then we get to Scotland, yeah. So I was yeah. there for three years, and then after I graduated, I moved here to Edinburgh to mm-hmm. do a, a master's course. And, well, it'll be nine years ago this summer. Not in accounting and finance, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> no, um, my sister's an accountant. So, okay, yeah. everyone's got one. Oh, yeah, sadly. Uh, <laughs> um, no, to do environment, it was called, it was one of these wishy washy titles again. It's an environment, culture, and society. Okay. So, Okay. It's environment studies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you stayed here and liked it, yeah. I guess. Just decided I'd live here. Yeah. It's quite a nice place. To come home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just felt right. And biggest place I'd ever lived, Edinburgh. So yeah. Not that big. Huge city. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you haven't got a Scottish accent yet. Well done. No. I think uh, sometimes when I'm with Scottish people, every now and then I say things and I'm like, 
we or yeah. you say hen? Do you call mm. people hens? No. <laughs> I don't think so. No. What's happening hen? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, every time, every now and then, my sister lives in Australia, and every now and then she's like, "Why are you talking with a Scottish accent?" Oh, really? I didn't realize yeah. I was. And, don't and, think I am. and how about your yoga life? So you've been, you started off yoga quite young. Did you mm. say nine, ten, um, eleven, twelve, somewhere 12, around twelve? I think about twelve. Twelve. I don't know exactly. Yeah. Around about twelve. Okay. Yeah. And what kind of yoga did you start off in? <laughs> it was a. a, a as you can imagine, small village community. Yeah. We had to drive to another village, yeah. um, I guess about, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour away, um, to go to this community centre, okay. come church hall type That's thing. where it happens in That's this country. That's where it all yeah. goes. Yeah. Um, and it was a room, it's a freezing cold room, huge sure. room. Um, <laughs> I, I think it was mostly people who were probably retired most people in the class were retired or okay was, so you're by far the youngest oh yeah by a yeah. long stretch what are you doing in there with that I mean with all they're looking <laughs> at you going you yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I don't know I think I just kind of snuck into the back and <laughs> just and, and, okay but the teacher was this sort of big bubbly big blonde curly hair mm -hmm. and she was just like like the epitome of what I thought then was a yoga teacher, so mm -hmm. all bouncy and lovely and everything was nice and mm -hmm. we'd stare at a candle for 20 minutes at the end of the <laughs> class and all that kind of stuff. Wow. It was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't really like yoga I do now. But, and um, you've moved on to then, so what would you call yourself now? So you're a yoga teacher. Y yes, I suppose I can call myself you that. You certainly can. Yeah. And, and what kind of... What, what do you, are you a vinyasa person? No. Are you a hatha holding yeah. houses? Yeah, deadly, I think time? I'm definitely not a dancey, flowy mm -hmm. person. I every now and then I have to do it for yeah. for financial for money. Reason. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I definitely I like I like teaching slow, so people can actually get into a pose and figure out what it means. Ex explore it. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And I find you can't do that so well in Vanessa. Totally, you know, no. Dancing in and That's out. That's not what it's about. I, I like practicing it every now and then. It's mm -hmm. nice, but it's not how I. It's not how I. And you're teaching uh, in Edinburgh. Yes. And you're teaching Hatha yoga. Are you teaching mm -hmm. anything else? Um, I well Hatha a bit of Yin. Mm -hmm. I have a very small class, and if there's only one person that comes. I've got a yoga groupie who comes every week. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Everyone's got to have one of those. Yeah, she's great. Um, yeah. She's in her 60s. Okay. She was. She only started yoga because I was with friends. And okay. She was like, oh, come Lucy, so you can see, so I can like support you as you become a Aww. teacher. It was really sweet. Yeah. And she, now every time she comes out and goes, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Very wow! Sweet. Yeah, yeah. She's got arthritis in her knees, mm -hmm. um, and I suppose for a long time she was. She's been coming with me for well, I guess about two years now. So yeah. For a long time she was like, getting off angry with herself and frustrated because in Warrior Two she would get pain in her knee, for example. Okay. All these kind of things, but then gradually she learned that she can just do something slightly different and mm -hmm. feel good at the end of class rather than go, oh, that was really hard, I hurt myself and my knees are in pain and my body's rubbish and all that stuff. She doesn't, and she's, like, she's very chatty. She'll talk to me after class and go, and then I learned this and then I learned that and then I did this <laughs> differently and I did that and then it's just amazing. <laughs> it's so sweet to see. Yeah, someone who's come to yoga very... <laughs> Latish in life. Latish in life. 60, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Halfway through at least, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, Who's just, yeah, she's, she's just, yeah, and she sort of preaches it to anyone she talks to, she's trying to get all her friends like, oh, you should try yoga. Fantastic. It's, it's great. Fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs to have one of those. Yeah, I think I've I think got so. a couple of those as well. Mm. Um, and you can't get rid of them, so. It's, no, uh, no, I don't think, I, no, no. she just keeps turning up. Yeah, you, you need everyone. told you not to come today. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But anyway, the reason I mentioned her is quite often if she's the only person that comes, we'll do yin because it's so much better for mm. her than trying to mm. feel like, yeah, because she just finds more space in muscles and, and finds that she can sit and then go, oh, hang on a minute. Life is better. Yeah, life mm. is okay. You mm. know, 
and then she'll walk, it's a basement studio, so she'll, <laughs> we always walk out together and she's like, look at me, look at me, I'm walking free. <laughs> <laughs> That's, <great. laughs> That's so satisfying yeah, as a teacher. Yeah, it's satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And so, so you're, and I mean, this leads us in a little bit to, to the focus of our discussion and why you're here. Yoga for you is not, is not about, I mean, I love your, uh, are you still Lucy No Lotus? <laughs> yes, yoga? I am. Yeah. It's really, I'm never going to sit in Lotus. You're never going to sit in Lotus. No. It, it's one of my top 10 yoga brands mm. in the world, one of my <laughs> top 10 faves. It's just so, it's just so funny. I think it's just I, I'm funny. I'm just a bit daft around the edges. So yeah. Well. Can't take it too seriously. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. And um, but that leads us kind of into uh, um, why you're here because you are um, you have a wonderful story. It's been a yoga is mm. is not just about the lotus pose for you. It's not about the handstand, but you can do a handstand. Uh, mm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it has happened. Yeah. I've seen you do it. Um, so. Uh, give us a little context. You practiced yoga. W what was the context around the, um, your practice that you had? Um, so from, I mean, from way back, like if we're talking church hall in rural Suffolk, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd been I'd been very sporty all all through my childhood. I was like on all the sports teams and did everything. You like could. Hockey, hockey, running, netball, okay, football, basketball. Oh, everything. Cross, yeah, literally. I went to quite a small school, so it was it was. I was on all the teams because mm -hmm. they only had a <laughs> limited pool of people okay. to draw from. Yeah. Um, so I was on. I did everything, and then I moved to high school. So in, in Suffolk, we had three schools: primary, middle, and then upper school or high school. Yeah. So at thirteen, I moved to high school mm -hmm. um, and I kind of lost all the friendship groups that I'd been in ah. which is a bit I went from a sort of a reasonably small school to something that was much bigger mm -hmm. um, and with that you always get shuff shuffled around mm. you get to pick one friend to, to stay in your class and, or at least that's how it was 20 odd years ago and mm. you pick your one friend and then you kind of lose contact it was before mobile phones so mm. you didn't have any way of Seeing before where your pal was at lunchtime. Yeah. Oh, before my phones. Those days. Yeah. It's madness. So you had to like rely on phoning your friend in an evening when you get home on the landline. Right. And <laughs> hoping that they picked up and if their parents picked up and yeah, anyway. Yeah, complicated. Um, so I lost touch with all my friends and um, kind of went into a bit of a strange transition, I suppose, as we all go through where I was I was kinda of lost. I didn't really know what I was doing and I um, I guess I found one, I eventually found contact with one friend and we were like, yes, we're going to go to the gym together one day. And that was kind of my thing, it was always sport, it was always mm -hmm. like fitness. Mm -hmm. And it was a very pivotal moment because we went to the gym and it was closed. Mm -hmm. We hadn't known it was going to be closed again because we didn't have any way of checking and yeah. all the rest of the stuff. And I was like, oh, wait, I was going to do fitness today, now what do I do? And I'm like, oh God. So that was, it wasn't the single point, of course, but it was one of like a, like a pillar in my memory of when things started to go a bit rocky for mm -hmm. me. Um, and I started to try and find other ways of managing the transition in less than healthy ways. As a teenager. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I became quite unwell. It was quite gradual, I suppose, initially. Um, it was... First of all, it was like, oh, I'm going to go on a diet, but you want a focus. Mm -hmm. Not that I would encourage that, but um, that was one of the things. And then it sort of spiraled from there, from being something that I was just using as a way of like structuring my day, I right. suppose. Yeah. Something that, without me really knowing, had completely taken over my whole life. It was like... Wow. It's, <laughs> when people talk about eating disorders, it's very much like, oh, it's about what you eat or what you look like, and it's way more complicated than that. Mm. Like a million times. Can you more give us? Can you give us the, the, the the simple version? It's so it's <laughs> it's it's way more, more complicated. But what is it's what way is more it? More complicated. So it's it's like this whole life that completely dominates everything you do. So. Every decision you make is controlled by this You're, thing. With that as a focus, yes. or how would that affect? Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, if I do this today, how does this impact what I'm going to eat or what I'm not going to eat? Or mm -hmm. And all these sort of variables, so everything. Like it, 
there's no other way of describing it I can think of it just completely like everything is under the control of this illness mm. it's, it's quite I mean becomes kind of like a I don't know how it's more complicated than being in a fog because your brain is so active with trying to like well, figure you, out you're quite analytical because yes. fog you would kind of be like in a daze, in a daze almost, and it's but not it's like not that. like that. No. You're actually quite calculating: should I eat that? Can't I eat mm. that? Is that is that close? Very much so. Yeah, everything is. Well, it shows up different for everybody. Mm. Um, but for me, it was very much about having like this huge structure to my day. Everything had to be analysed. Everything had to be checked and cross-checked. It was like being the ultimate logistics manager. In terms of <laughs> carbohydrates in and out, or how are you thinking? Um, or so, I've, I kind of, mm, skipping ahead, but I'll come back, I kind of went through three, three periods, I suppose, of having an eating, eating disorder. For me, it showed up as like this time in my early teenage years and then stabilised a bit. And then in my early 20s, I became unwell again and then stabilised. And then mm -hmm. again, like a few days later, so every time was different. Mm -hmm. So for that time, it was... Yeah, it was... I don't know if I was even in that particular period. I wasn't. I don't mm -hmm. think I was even that conscious of like analyzing specific okay. things. It was very much like I need to control something. Mm -hmm. I know I can control what I'm eating. Right. Right. How do I move on? How from do you there? do that? Yeah. How okay. do I do that? Yeah. Mm. So I think it was at that at that time it was quite. <laughs> it wasn't neatly packaged by any means, but it but was. But as you yeah. say, it's quite. You just mentioned logistics. It's mm. quite. Uh, it's very controlled and thought through and there's times and dates and I have a great structure to your days and, mm. and weeks. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. And over time you became, I guess, physically unwell. Yeah. Um, through this process. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I gradually became more unwell to the point it's a very, very secretive illness. Like nobody knew, <laughs> at mm. least, well, I thought nobody knew. Probably mm. people did, but um, for, at least to start with. And I suppose over that, three year period um, as you might imagine it did become more obvious that mm. I wasn't looking after myself mm -hmm. um, and as it became more as people became more aware um, I was sort of things slowly started I was con well I thought I was controlling it but it was controlling me mm. that's something you hear quite a lot it's, mm. it was very much like leading my life but so in order to try and <laughs> keep me well-ish um, people started like taking hold of little bits of my life like mm -hmm. exercise as i mentioned had been a huge thing so mm -hmm. that became something i wasn't doing any mm -hmm. longer to try and monitor all right um the situation i suppose and but i was allowed one thing and that was yoga <laughs> it was like ah. that was considered a, a safe a safe practice i uh -huh. suppose so i wasn't i wasn't running or badminton or netball or all, all these things that were quite on the face of it quite physically active so, yes um 20 years ago uh, when there was this one small yoga class that was seen as a good thing it was like mm -hmm. yes we send lucy to yoga then maybe she'll i don't know she'll it'll do something for maybe her. i'll do something good yeah um, and but running and basketball and those things were seen as not because of peer pressure as a as teens peer pressure yeah but also being physically active when you're when you're not well when you're not well is ah okay detrimental or Might have seen been. to be detrimental right there's a whole other discussion about whether you should be active when you're mm. with an eating disorder or not but it's, mm. um, when I was 13 I didn't necessarily have complete control over what I wanted to do so mm. um, I'm 47 I don't have complete <laughs> control over what I'm doing <laughs> <laughs> no pretty much yeah uh, so yeah so, so so you so you stumble into yoga mm. pretty much and um, clearly you've a very difficult situation you're very young mm. um, now in our discussions before we've started this um, podcast you've said that yoga is far much more than the shapes and things did you did it mm. did it did it begin back then or was it just a, a cold hall staring at candles with old people <laughs> at the time it, it was and it wasn't it was funny because uh, again, I have this like little snapshot memories of one day going home from yoga and being like, 
I feel so relaxed. And actually saying that out loud, mm -hmm. that was not something I would say at mm -hmm. all. And I couldn't, I couldn't analyze it. Well, I probably mm -hmm. could have done, but I chose not to analyze it <laughs> at that time. Yeah. Um, but it's funny, this is something I only realized or remembered a few weeks ago is that when at that age, there was this window in our school timetable where it was, it was kind of like a free activity period, mm -hmm. I suppose. It was the equivalent to one class. And it was, I think it was designed to give the teachers a break from us all. Yeah, <laughs> um, but the way it was structured is that it had to be something active, um, but it had to be self-managed, so mm -hmm. it had to be peer-led. Um, so the people who were studying dance went off and practiced their routines, okay. or the drama students were allowed to go and practice their plays because that was still mm -hmm. seen to be active. And um, <laughs> as I mentioned, like, I was in a, a peer group then that didn't really do sport and okay. had lost all that contact. And, I was, when this got announced, um, I remember saying <laughs> to a friend, completely as what I thought was a joke, I was like, oh, I could teach people yoga, like completely as a joke, and, like not thinking it would happen. Yeah. And then it just so happened that this friend was one of the more gobby students. I was very <laughs> quiet. She was the complete the opposite. polar opposite and went, Miss, put her hand up, Miss, Lucy's going to teach us yoga. <laughs> uh, and the teacher went, okay, fine, you can do it in such and such a hall. So I was like, what the hell? Wow. <laughs> so it's just, it was funny because it kind of, I was becoming more and more isolated from friends because of mm. this thing that was completely dominating. Um, but it kind of gave me that little bit of connection back to them because mm -hmm. I was somehow responsible for, mm. I was a very good student, so uh -huh. I, I never got into trouble or anything mm -hmm. like that. So there was this one window, one hour of a, a day, a week where I had to be I had to like make sure people didn't go off and smoke behind the bike sheds. And mm -hmm. Not that it would have been my fault if they did, but mm. uh, but it also meant I had to remember what I was doing the night before because I didn't know what I was doing. Of mm. course, I didn't know how to teach yoga, but I was like, if I can just parrot fashion what the teacher did with the candles yeah. did, then I can just do that, and mm -hmm. that'll that'll do something, <clears throat> won't it? Yeah. So I just we didn't have candles because. School. School. Yeah. Um, but I would I remember sort of specifically, folk, I could remember like a little bit, it was a Hatta class, so it wasn't, mm -hmm. I didn't have to remember sequences, I had mm -hmm. to remember a couple of poses, mm -hmm. and then usually that would involve a certain amount of people falling around <coughs> laughing and giggling. Sure. And then, <laughs> and then we would always finish with like a, a meditation, because that's what the teacher did. Mm -hmm. So I would try and remember, it's probably not... I don't know that I was necessarily receiving as much benefit from it, because I was like, I've got to remember this, I've got yeah. to remember this. And then I would recount as much of it as I could to this, I don't know, it's like six, seven, eight of us who were in this dark gym mm. room trying to navigate teenage years and then re regale this um, meditation. And uh -huh. then it was so weird because people would come up and go, oh, that was nice. Ah, <laughs> yeah. So it went from like a, a room full of teenage girls who were like, yeah, 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 yeah. this is so funny, <laughs> to being like, oh. Mm. Nice. Mm. So yeah, I, it kind of created a bit of accountability, I suppose, because I had to. It was, became about more, more than just me. As the great Iyengar says, <laughs> uh, what's one of his my favorite sayings? Um, Practice for your students mm. and teach for yourself. Yeah, I like that saying very yeah. much. It sounds a little bit like yeah. your. I mean, you've talked about accountability and. Yeah like having to organize something the night before and <laughs> suddenly you're responsible for stuff. Yeah. Switches the whole tables yeah. around, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah. I'd completely forgotten about that until maybe a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. Completely forgot that I did that for maybe, I don't know, six months or maybe less. Yeah. And about a term's worth of school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> so yeah, and that's when I became a yoga teacher. That's when you became a yoga teacher. <laughs> Been teaching uh, since 12. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, um, and so life goes on, as you yeah. said, you've had, um, you've had, you've gone back into, um, what would you call it? You've gone back to being unwell again, uh, two or three times since, since a teenager. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, you've said that for you, traditional healthcare has never really, it's never really floated your boat or it's just never been efficient for you no. in helping you. That's super curious to me as a yoga teacher, <laughs> without going into the into the juicy details. But could you could you say mm. roughly why you think that's the case? Um, I was, as I said, I was very quiet. So mm -hmm. 
talking therapies. It's ah. like, well, you want me to talk about my feelings? I don't mm-hmm. have any feelings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've cut, cut myself off from my feelings. How mm-hmm. am I going to talk about my feelings when I don't know what they are? Mm. So that was part of it. So part of traditional treatment is, is talking therapy. But mm-hmm. So that was kind of out to me. I was very mm. quiet. You just didn't participate in it. No. Mm. I what am I going to talk about? Mm. <laughs> like everything was inside. So how was I... The, for me, there was this very visual wall in my head from what I was thinking and what I was allowed to say out loud. So mm-hmm. again, it was more analysis. It was like, I can't say that, can't say that, can't mm-hmm. say that. So yeah, that didn't work. Um, and I think it's interesting because, again, not saying too much about traditional treatment, it's very much about cutting you off from your body and... So it's all in the mind, it's all in the head, it's an yeah. analytical... Yeah, psychological I guess so. approach. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I didn't, I didn't engage very well with it because, again, it was all it was all talking based, and when mm. you couldn't voice what you wanted to say, that's not gonna work. Kind of, that's the end of it, really. Mm. It was that simple. So you just sat there, and they said things, and you didn't say much, and then ding. Pretty much. Wow. Yeah, and then yeah, I was very much the don't know girl, like. How do you feel about X? Mm-hmm. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> of course I knew. What you, but What did you do today? Don't, don't know. know. Pretty much. Yeah, I am not telling you. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. So, and and uh, this proceeded so far along and you, so you never, you never got out of, is, would you call it a cycle? Like kind of getting better and then, hmm. and enough looking back if that makes it to where kind you see of, it. Kind of, yeah. I mean... Or peaks and troughs. Peaks and troughs, yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's probably more. So I would, so for that first time, I was 13 or so, and it was probably about three years that I was like gradually becoming more and more and more and more and more unwell. And, and then a few things shifted, and I, I, I don't know that I necessarily know exactly what changed, but it kind of got to a point where I was like the bottom of the trough. Right. <laughs> and then things would improve, but... I wasn't becoming, I was becoming maybe physically healthy, but certainly my mind was still mm. messed. So I would lift out of it a touch. Um, and then, I, again, like things would change Not and it would like... Just go down again. Go down again, mm-hmm. exactly. So that happened. Winter or just bad things happening <laughs> in life or yeah. social life not going so well. Or I'm sure there are lots of things. There, I mean, yeah. there are also like... Changing, changing situations has always been a, a big thing for me. So like moving, the, moving around, moving, moving around, mm. or uh, like things that were like getting injured or something. So if, ah. if running had been something that was keeping me well, mm-hmm. then if I got injured, then like, now you couldn't run. Now what do I do? Right. <laughs> so, so yeah, peaks and peaks and troughs. But the peaks weren't peaks were healthy on the outside, not on the inside. Mm. Is that like a dime bar advert, I think? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth on the yeah. outside, crunchy on the inside. Ah, yeah. my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, so so you are going you're going through this. You're mm. you're working with the National Health Service here and services that they provide. Mm. And so now kind of start so here we are in 2019. Um, You've said some fascinating, one fascinating thing is that we've been preparing this in our email uh, thing. You say that um, what connect, and you just mentioned it earlier, that yoga connects the mind to the body. Now, mm. what do you mean by that? And how is that relevant to, to what you're going through? Mm. So because I, that's, yeah. my, that's one of the reasons I am in yoga. Like this morning, we practiced together this morning online. Yeah. And, you know, I've just been doing three weeks of yin yoga uh, and we did a couple of planks today and a couple of back bends. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm 47. Oh, it's, I'm feeling better than I have for three weeks just from one hatha practice. Mm. And it's, made, it's changed my whole day. I've woken up like this is a good day today suddenly, mm. whereas being a bit kind of like I wouldn't say craggy, but I'm certainly like I'm yin. I'm yin out after three and a half weeks of yin. Um, so that's just that's a very superficial story, but you men- you're mentioning this yeah. and it's fascinating from your that's what fascinates me with your story. So yeah. can you talk a little bit how does that how does that how does that work and what does it do? Yeah, so I think it's interesting because I probably well 
that first time I tried yoga when I was 13 or so, I wasn't necessarily really aware of, mm. as I'm sure my brain was developing as, as it does as a teenager. But when yeah. I came back to yoga when I was first at uni, so I was about 20, I suppose, um, was, <laughs> again, this was at a time when I was becoming unwell again. So mm-hmm. I would, it seems to be a theme because I went to a very small uni and I'd have to drive <laughs> okay. to a village to go to a, a class in a freezing cold school hall. <laughs> uh, um, but it became my constant. It became like the one thing every week that was was actually like, you know, okay, at least I've got yoga today. Ah, okay. <laughs> and part of it was the teacher, for sure, because mm-hmm. I would get there and her name was Elaine and she would just go, hello! And like make eye contact and be welcoming like on a very personal level without taking any judgment or, or anything like that. And, I was always, I was not a very happy bunny at all, so I was probably mm. looking like that as well, going in the mm. head down, not making eye contact, feeling miserable as sin, um, but she would make this conscious effort to go, hello, good mm. to have you, and it was like, oh, really? Are you, <laughs> yeah. No, are you sure? Are you yeah. sure you want me to be here? Um, but I think it was, uh, again, I was like, and because by then I was driving, I'd come home from the class and I'd go, what on earth happened in that hour? I don't. I was moving through shapes and mm-hmm. all of that, but I was going. I feel all right, like, mm. and I'd wake up the next morning and feel rubbish again. But I'd be like, oh. but that just kind of there's a little window. That so, little haze yeah. after the thing, mm. and I guess you began to connect the dots. You kept yeah. going. You kept going back, and you saw that again and again. Yeah, yeah I kept. I was like, Something kept taking me back to the class. Mm. I mean, there was a lots of things in the that could have stopped me, like cost is always one, mm-hmm. and having to drive, and it being in the evening when I'd, I'd right. been at uni all day. It could be raining or, or snowing exactly. or just a bad and day. Quite often it was. Mm. <laughs> so there was lots of things that could have stopped me, but for some reason I just kept going. Mm. And it just, it was, it was, as I said, it was that tiny one, like tiny little window in the week when everything else was rubbish. I was really not very happy or very well and I was like right okay in the car it was wow. like the whole process it's like get in the car mm. drive park do yoga drive come home feel okay <sighs> okay <laughs> now you've got another week to look forward to yeah and that gave you a little bit of something it did yeah it was, mm. and that was yeah pretty much the only thing but I think and there was a, another thing as well with that that um, one of my flatmates at the time had had quite a bad car accident and she wasn't it was, it was a very complicated injury she got, but it, was, it put her in hospital for a week, a, a good few weeks after the accident. It was, mm-hmm. it was like her body just it's essentially was like, you hurt me, you hurt me, you hurt me. Why aren't you listening to me? Why are you trying to carry on as normal? Boom. And she just she was just paralyzed on the floor. It was wow. really scary. Wow. It was terrifying. Um, but one of her things was that she wasn't able to drive, but she found, because this was a very gentle... Again, it was like a room mm-hmm. full of 60-year-old women. Mm-hmm. Um, but she found that helpful. And and even though she could do very little of the physical mm-hmm. stuff because she was recovering from this mystery injury that nobody really got the handle, I would drive her there. So again, that's a, like mm-hmm. accountability. Like, oh, my friend, she's injured. I'm going to mm-hmm. take her. I'll drive. So mm-hmm. we would go. And she would come out of the class and go, oh, I'm still in pain, but I, I'm, I feel a bit better. Wow. So it was, and I think that's, I mean, I'm sure you can like look into it at really deep levels, but I think that's just nice to be curious about why. Mm. What is it about her being in a room, moving through some some of the postures, definitely not all of them, mm. um, having had this very traumatic injury, mm. to come out and go, mm, I think this is beneficial. It's taking, <laughs> it sounds like for both of you, it's taking, you know, this incredibly complex world out of your head mm. just for an hour yeah. and breathing and was it candles again as well <laughs> i don't think there was so, candles because it no? was a school hall this time okay. so it was probably fire alarms <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think there was and it could candles. almost i mean it could have been running it could have been um, a badminton class it could have been uh basketball um i guess it could have been but it wasn't for no. some for some reason yeah mm. yeah i think I don't know, I think it's different with different teachers and I think that those two particular teachers I'd had up until that point were very much about like 
It's about connecting your breath. Mm -hmm. I guess with eating disorders and other things, you don't, you don't, you're not aware of your breathing. Because <laughs> mm. like, uh, if you breathe, then you, you get bigger, and that's a bad thing. It's like, ah. oh, uh, but it, being in this like safe, protected space where you're allowed to breathe and go, oh, okay, mm -hmm. I'm allowed to breathe fully. Mm, this mm -hmm. is a bit strange. Um, I'm sure, and I'm sh I know there are some studies that show that like the breath is so powerful in connecting down through the vagus nerve is like connecting signals mm. and it can help rebuild things that you cut yourself off from. Your parasympathetic so, nervous exactly. system and re relaxing and yes. unthinking yeah. and de-stressing mm -hmm. and well I know I know from just being in a in, in an office job these are all the opposites mm. to you know coffee and red bull and sugar <laughs> and donuts mm. and up and up and thinking more and more and more this is totally the opposite that, that's why the reason i got into yeah. yoga because it was the balance to that yeah. a long time ago yeah um much less um dramatic circumstances <laughs> but i can appreciate what you're saying yeah yeah yeah, it's just interesting. Mm. And then, <laughs> and then, um, so you continue this. So now you've got yeah. these, you've got these, you've got this, you've got these peaks and troughs mm. happening, mm -hmm. and you've got something which happens once a week, and that's not very, not very much. much. No. Um, and then eventually, life gets a little bit worse, and you, mm. you have a, your biggest trough mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. And uh, and you 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 almost you say you almost tried to kill yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, that's, no, almost. <laughs> that's not almost, I mean, that's, yeah. that's as troughy as a trough as you could trough. trough. It's a pretty trough, pretty troughy trough. <laughs> and again, you're saying that, um, talking through it and, and no. going through that process again, didn't work. No. That's, that really, that really blows my mind. That's inc incredible. <laughs> um, but, and, and this is the, our first email that we had. You have somehow figured out how to fix yourself. <laughs> yeah. That's, that is crazy. Uh, and it's, but it's really, really inspiring. Uh, yeah. um, how do you think that's happened? So you've gone through the troughiest trough the that you could trough, trough. trough mm. into. And where in that trough do you go? I mean, had you stopped doing yoga at that time? So... So the troughiest trough was after I'd moved to Edinburgh. Mm. So I'd been in Edinburgh a couple of years, I suppose. Um, and when I first moved to Edinburgh, I was like, yeah, there's this yoga thing. And I was going around sampling all sorts of, because there's this so a, much yeah, yoga. Yeah, compared like, to village halls. Yeah, yeah. Di very different to village halls. So I tried all these different styles and I was learning little bits and pieces, but I was still in my head very like, controlling and I was like well I can only do it if it fits into like a nice little package and all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. um, running was still very much a part of my life so I was doing a lot of running as, mm -hmm. as running is still a part of my life um, but then a few little things happened at the same time <laughs> which led to this trophy trough um, a few things mm. that had kind of even though I was I was still in like one of the coming out of the last trough I suppose if we're talking about troughs um, I keep thinking of horses, but there were no horses involved. No, what? That's a shame. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was coming out of the last one, and then a number of things happened all at the same time, which meant mm. that I was just like... A perfect storm of badness happened. Exactly, mm. yeah. just didn't know what, on, and I just didn't see anything. It was like, there was no light, no shade, no fog, no, no pictures, nothing. I was just like, wow, that's it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I can't. I can't carry on. So, it was a very, it was a very conscious decision, mm. um, and I was like, logical brain it was like, right. I'm in this state. What I need to do is end my life. So mm -hmm. Bang, bang. A to B. Eight, like, eight. One plus one equals two. Exactly. It seemed very straightforward, and I was like, right, okay. There was no sort of real emotion attached to it. it was just mm -hmm. like, hmm, that's what I'm going to do. Wow. Um, which now I say it like that is very. What on earth can kind of Yeah. But that's how it was. Mm -hmm. It was just so I made so I did this thing that mm -hmm. uh, put me in hospital and was like, okay. And I woke up. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> one plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one doesn't equal two. What am I doing here? And um, because of the nature of what I'd done, I was I was, I was definitely then in a fog. I was like. Mm. 
don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but there was this nurse, and <laughs> there seems to be like a theme of like people who just make eye contact, and they're just like. Mm. Ah. And I remember. Her, so it's a funny, it's a funny way of being. Like you, you do this quite drastic thing, and then as soon as they're like, oh, clinically, yes, she's okay, she's not going. To ah, you're discharged. Discharged, and... exactly. Wow. <laughs> so, but this nurse was like, as I was leaving, she was like, you know what? From now, just one step at a time. And I was like, yeah. and it seems very simple, but mm-hmm. somehow it just stuck in my head, and I was like, okay, one step at a time. Mm-hmm. Okay, I can do that. Okay, um, and it wasn't like it was like <laughs> I didn't skip out of hospital and go, yay, everything's fine. I'm like gonna go and do yoga and my life's gonna be perfect. It certainly wasn't like that. Mm. It was very rocky for a good few months, but I sort of realised that these traditional things they weren't there for me. Mm. And I was like, well, what do I do here? Ah, so this is your logical brain kicking yes, in again. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Like one plus one doesn't equal two, okay. Mm-hmm. So what else how else can I how else can I control this situation? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, maybe I try and take the control back from the situation where I've been in the worst state of my life to being like, hmm mm-hmm. okay. What the NHS or or what I'm being offered is is not serving me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so okay, let's try try taking so I a lot of time on Google going wow. <laughs> start googling things like how to help or how to do this and that and this and that mm. um, and I think I don't know if it was necessarily a conscious decision to start seeing if I could invest more time in yoga but I'd become aware that there was like I cleared some space in my head so I'd spent by then I guess about 13 13 14 years being in these peaks and troughs right. all the time yeah. still with the, this like massive blob in my head of, of mm. mess but somehow even though that, that crisis I would never go back there and n- <laughs> never want anyone to go through that but it did like there was like a little burrow went in okay. it was like a tiny little window and I was like oh if I just push that to one side and that to one side then I've got a bit more space and mm. I can think again and it's like oh I can think more constructively rather than being like analysis, illness, brain, oh, there's little windows here. So one thing I noticed actually made me sort of, it's like I had a broom in my head, like pushing a bit more to the side was, yeah. was going to yoga again. And I was like, I don't know why it's working. And certainly I didn't, and who cares? You know, and yeah. it didn't matter. Yeah. But I was dusting my, dusting my brain a little bit, shifting stuff out of the way. And it didn't stop. It wasn't like I moved oh. stuff to the side. Mm-hmm. And it came back again. Sometimes it would come back a little bit, but mm. then I'd go to yoga again, or I'd sit and do child pose for five minutes, or... Oh my, wow. Uh, oh, that helps me. And it was like, every time you just push it a little bit more further mm-hmm. away. And gradually, I had more and more space, and I was like, oh, life is kind of interesting. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a complete cha- game changer. Yeah, it was huge. Um, but it wasn't like it was one day like this, right. another day just... like that. As the nurse said. Yeah, tiny almost. little steps. Yeah. Hmm. So. And by that, more and more how space. how often are you going to yoga? This is a year later after you after you tried to take your own life. How? Um, I was probably going. I don't know, two or three times a week. Wow, I mean, it's it's it's, it's your average city person's average who city likes yoga. Person, yeah. yeah, but for me, it wasn't. I mean, it was about going to classes and I was getting very fussy about the teachers I went to Mm. because as you do (laughs) well as you do yeah but any by then I was sort of learning what my triggers were and going okay that teacher says this every time that's no good for me Mm. (laughs) I can't have that in my head so I'm gonna go look for another teacher Mm -hmm. and that's so much choice so I could could just keep going and shopping around Mm -hmm. and seeing what I liked and (laughs) it was a big deal for me to step foot in a yoga class because I was like Oh God! <laughs> um, There's a lot of people doing the amazing people shapes doing and the amazing, amazing clothes. Yeah. And I wasn't a dancer. I mm. wasn't a gymnast. I was very much like I'm here because there's something working for me. But somehow I was still like second guessing myself. Going, should I go to that class? Is oh. that really for me? <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, I did. I kept going, and it wasn't a lot. But it wasn't so much about being in the classes. It was more about having a commitment of going to them. Mm. Um, 
it was more about who would be there. Um, mm-hmm. So if, if I related to the teacher, then mm-hmm. great. If I didn't, then I didn't go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and it was about like the whole process. Like you had I had something to build my life around that was positive. So if I had a class in a day, it's like right. Okay, I need to do this. I need to do this. Mm. I need to do my laundry. I need to do that. Wow. But I need to make sure I've got time for this thing. <laughs> That's fancy. Right. So you have a whole ritual around <laughs> almost a two or three d- yeah, times. So. Like yeah. almost like. Well, this you've got to do the laundry, and then you've probably got to drink or yeah. eat. And yeah. You've got to. Well, now you can't do that this day. Yeah. So now you've got a little bit of a st- structure to yeah. your week. Bit of a structure. And you starting to make any yoga buddies? Did you have any yoga buddies? We just. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think. People you spoke. I was very as, morning as, too. Morning, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, there was okay. a connection. Like, mm-hmm. if there were regular people, then it would be someone you could. I was very much still like this. It's like, mm-hmm. don't talk Head to down. anyone. Hope nobody sees me. Get in, get out. Do yeah. the thing. Not worry about too much. But you do as you do when you go to something regularly. You start recognizing faces. And mm-hmm. I'm not a completely antisocial individual. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I have my moments. Yeah. But if there was the same person like hanging their coat up, you'd be like. Hi, how are you? Or, mm. And not that you're actually asking how they are, but mm. a just, form of just, greeting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I acknowledge you're there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and then it builds a bit more familiarity, I suppose, with mm. with more classes and more. Um, yeah, mm. so I'm finding I was finding my network. I was finding where. Wow, I, felt safe. I mean, you couldn't have. So now you're in a. Are you are you still in peaks and troughs, or are you no. now are you now in a? No, I'm. I don't just, know. You're now in the uh, in a dell with a river and, and trees. <laughs> Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. With a dog, with, a do- with dogs, yeah, <laughs> uh, running or bounding around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it can't, it can't be. I mean, if I talk to and I have enough discussion with it, people with addictive and compulsive behaviors, yeah. they say they're never, they're never. The peaks and troughs are never gone, but they they can see, they can kind of see them coming. Yeah, if you like, is that would you describe that in mm. a similar way? Or would you say you're now in a different? wallpaper and you're not you're not in peaks and troughs anymore you're in a a different yeah. dance or a different rhythm that's interesting because if if those like 13 14 years were like atlantic waves like massive storm peaks mm. and troughs now it's maybe like little ripples on the pond <laughs> mm. so of course every everybody has we're like, humans yeah, yeah yeah that's part of it but yeah. now i know and now i know how to look after myself like i know if i'm in a little bit of a like the little dip on the pond, I'm like, oh, I feel a bit rubbish today. What are the things I can do to make myself feel better? Oh my God, Lucy, <laughs> that's... Well, sometimes it works, and sometimes right. I'm like, no, I, need, I just need to get under my duvet today. Yeah. And, but then, even then, I'm like, I know that actually that's okay, because tomorrow, maybe things will be different. And maybe tomorrow isn't different, but the next day, it's like, oh my there's gosh. always like a little thread, because I know, I do know and that it's going to come up again. I mean... It's mine. That's 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 why I say to you that it's a wonderful story. <laughs> and you've said, I think your quote in your um, typically humble uh, <laughs> we come right was, I think something like it's not that interesting, but uh, we can have a chat if you like. <laughs> uh, but you know, for, as a yoga teacher, mm-hmm. and you are a yoga teacher also, and you talked about your your number one fan earlier, who <laughs> turns up and skips up the stairs. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all my, not many people in yoga want to necessarily, you know, shout this from the bell towers, mm. but I think that's why everyone is getting on the mat in, in some way. Yeah. And, and you've had three bigger peaks and troughs than most people coming onto a, a yoga mat. Um, can you look, can you look back at this story and, and, and are there, what from your, the, the massive, an incredibly inspiring narrative that you have where do you what little pointers do you have for people who are listening to this and go I mean I can't I couldn't do that or that sounds impossible hmm. how did how did you, from your experiences where would you look back and go well actually these are the, my little kind of Lucy's Lucy's tips for I can't think of something which rhymes with Lucy mm-hmm. which sounds exciting yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love. Lucy's trucies or something like that. <laughs> what little what little gifts of, of nuggets of wisdom do you have in there looking back at this? Um, I suppose <laughs> that taking ownership is a big thing because mm. you can feel obliged 
with yoga, you, you might feel obliged to go to a specific class because you've been once. Mm. <laughs> Oof. Mm. Throw that out the window. That was a dog. Yeah, that's a dog. She's chasing <laughs> the cat. Yeah. Throw that out the window. Throw yeah. that out the window. You, maybe you'll offend someone, maybe you won't. But to be honest... Probably not. And even if you do offend them, then hopefully they've got their ways of, mm -hmm. of dealing with that offence. And if they don't, then that's something they can work on. Mm. Um, so throw all that out the window. Don't feel obliged to do things. Trust. And I guess the big thing with the way I was, was I taught myself not to trust my instinct. It was like mm. completely cut that off. It's like, no, don't trust your instinct because that will be a bad thing. Mm. Actually, maybe if you let yourself trust your instinct, you can slowly practice that maybe today you want to do a very slow, gentle class, or maybe today you don't mm -hmm. want to do yoga, you maybe want to go and walk along a river, mm -hmm. or, and maybe that is still yoga. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bake donuts, or go yeah. to the cinema, yeah, or could do that. whatever you're going to do. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think a lot of it is about trusting yourself to know what's right for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a big thing, um, trusting yourself. Well, I found it, it's a huge thing. Mm. Cause we, where well, you're saying it, and I, I would say, you know, from my snippet of human existence, that most people don't necessarily listen to their gut feel. No, mm. no. and I, it's, it's about I think little and often is. Mm. So maybe, maybe yoga is not your thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How strange would that be? But <laughs> yeah. Um, but I try lots of different things in this period after the the trophy trough. I was sampling lots of different things. So I was ah. um, dipping my toe in a lot of different ponds going, does this one work for me? Wow. Mm, maybe it does, maybe I'll try it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe different it flavor of that. No, no, mm. no, that doesn't work. Okay, try mm -hmm. something else. Um, so I think it's about not feeling like too structured because someone says this works for me, it doesn't mean ah. it's gonna work for, mm. doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. It's a very individual experience. And once you navigate what you do like and find things, then, then latch on to them. Oh my God. <laughs> and just be like, right, mm. okay. And figure out a way to make time, because time is the one thing people say they don't have, but mm. you always have time. Um, just figure out a way to make time for the things that you find do work. And you'll know from a feeling afterwards, I usually find. And that's the that way, you, that's worked. where you measure how, yeah. whether it was repeatable, worth to repeat it like, yeah. again or not. Yeah. Do you feel good after? Very mm. simple. Do I feel good? No. Okay, don't do that again. And rather than once a month, right. little like little and often once a week, two or three times a week. Yeah. That's that's probably that's probably mm. the magic dust there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think so. And even if you, because certainly there's are days and were days where it's like I should do this, but I'm not going to. But find a compromise. Mm. <laughs> and say, like, okay, I'm not going to do that, but I will lie with my legs at the wall for five minutes because I can do that in my room. I don't have to talk to anyone. I don't yeah. have to get out of the house. Mm -hmm. But still, maybe it'll make me focus on something other than the inner, right. the inner chat. Um, yeah. And that's, I mean, uh, another one of my favorite quotes is, uh, which I don't think comes from anybody, but I, I, I actually, this is, I think it might be one of my quotes, is I never enjoy getting on the yoga mat, but I <laughs> rarely regret coming off it I yeah. don't think I've ever regret coming off it I often go like <gasps> can't really bothered. can't be bothered it's January the 4th and anything remotely exciting yeah. is a long way away yeah I'll just uh, and sometimes I do as you say but other days you come off and you go oh my god <laughs> I feel exponentially better than I did before yeah. and you're confirming that from yeah. From your trophy troughs. Trophy troughs. Mm. It's, I, I kind of think it's like help. Because people talk about recovery, but I, if I was to recover, I would be 10 again. Because that's when I'd last be. Mm. Or not that I necessarily was well then, but um, on the face of it, that's when it, I would be recovering to. You don't want to recover to. <laughs> to 10 years old. Because I learned a lot. Like, even mm. though it wasn't great, like, I don't want to erase 15, 20 years of my life by mm. thinking that. That was bad. Go back to something that was good. Mm -hmm. You use what you've gone through mm -hmm. to help inform like how to continue building yourself up. So I think if I was all like below the surface with my trophy troughs, everything mm. was like below neutral. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like 
always building on top of something because they've mm. got like a, a foundation, I suppose. And I mean, I don't, I mean, you've got so, I don't know who your yoga students are, but just listening to this story, I mean, blow my socks off, Batman. I mean, you, anybody who is remotely related to have your experience, I would, I would, I would like, I would be listening to this and going, holy crap, I want to come to her yoga class just because we, uh, as you say, it might not be the same. Maybe they'd rather be doing cooking or, uh, <laughs> or uh, I don't know, pottery or anything. Mm -hmm. But the very generic experience is find something that you like. And, and connect the dots relatively regularly. Mm. That's super cool stuff. Yeah, I think so. Mm. So we're getting to the end of our time as my cat comes in <laughs> and wants to gate crash the, uh, the podcast, as always. You, you, have, uh, you gave me a couple of questions that you wanted to talk uh, about. Yeah. I like them. Do you remember what they were? I do remember yeah? them. Yeah, go on, shoot. Which one do you want first? Anyone, you, you decide. Okay, okay, so the first one is more, more interesting to me because I can't... Mm spend a lot of time on Google figuring it out mm. um, <laughs> and that would be if there was because you teach a lot of people uh -huh. all over the place um, and if there was one thing that you could make sure that everybody went away with um, what would that be I, li I love and this why? I love this question because it ties so yeah. directly into our discussion yeah. and I had to think about it less than two seconds oh. for the answer easy and it's safety mm -hmm. number one word people must come out of my class feeling safe and nurtured. If I had to add one thing to that, they must feel safe. Like I can go in here and no matter what other shit's happening in my life, whatever else is going on, I can come in here and feel safe for an hour, for 45 minutes, however long the class is. That is my number one priority for everybody. They're not going to feel necessarily like hi everybody it's handstand class they might not go whoopee <laughs> i love handstands but i'm gonna i mean you know me i'm gonna structure the class so that everybody gets a little bit of a taste what it might be like if they were to choose that they were to do handstand at some time in their life before we all leave this thing mm -hmm. they might not do it but they might do a downward facing dog and I say, oh, it's not that, it's not handstand day. You clearly don't want to do one of those, but look, let's just work on the hands today because it's on, I suppose, on your hands. So let's work on your hands. And they might say, nope, I don't even like down dog today. I was okay, well, then you're assisting somebody else because you know how to assist in handstand, right? They'll nod their head, hopefully, and I'll go, okay, well. So, and I find from, and it really bleeds into what you're saying, saying and my experience of being a student and I am still a student um, when I go to classes I love it when I feel like I can say actually I'm not going to do it like that I'm going to do it that way if a teacher looks at me and says no 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 I don't care what you think you must do it this way I feel the opposite of what I think a yoga basic class is all about I want to feel like it's not me against the teacher it's not me against other people it's not me against myself and out of that is an incredible amount of self-healing which takes place. I feel, uh, I use the word nurture, so the teacher is a little bit there, is giving you the space, it's not threatening you, is probably pushing a couple of your buttons, like I know it's not handstand day today, but I know you don't like it, but I'm going to help you if you trust me to help you. And there's a kind of there's a very symbiotic two-way relationship going there. And then they come out with exactly what has been a theme through what you've been saying. They come out going, you know what? Even better, like, oh my God, I'm clearly better than when I went in. And I, I, yeah, I did some weird things and some strange stuff, but I, at no point did I feel like um, it was going to be bad for me or people were looking at me or judging me or I was judging myself. And so for me, the safety, that's what my first teacher taught me that you just got to be, just got to offer a safe environment for, and I think that's almost every, every time I step into a class, we're talking about this just in our yin training, but I also talk about in our, in our Hatha classes. So s feel safe, 
and feel nurtured because I think as adults, even as children, we don't feel either of those, not at the same time. So that's what I'm trying to do. And I think so much goodness comes out of, of that. So that's my approach. Yeah. Mm. Might not be might not be huggy huggy like uh, cotton wool marshmallowy safe. Mm. In that, you know, it might not be a gentle yoga class where, you know, it's it's um, but there's never a time when the student feels like um, they're gonna be told that what they're doing is wrong or not good. Yeah. Or um, because that's the opposite of what her book is about. Yeah. Yeah. That's so Does important. that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's so important to make sure you're not <laughs> doing any harm, isn't it? Anyone no. Else? Yeah. No, do no bad. I think. Do no bad. Yeah. That's okay. what yoga is all about, mm -hmm. I would almost say. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what happens in the hour or the two hours or whatever. It's, it's irrelevant. It's about, yeah. 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 It's, it's irrelevant. I have people who come into. And they don't do anything. You and you've been you're, you're saying that you were that type. No, they come in the back. They sit at the back. Don't look at you. Don't do any of the things correct. And I've made mistakes where I've gone up to them way back in my student, in my teaching career, and gone, "Hey, you, you're not doing it properly, person. Yeah. Come on, uh, do it properly." And it's always gone badly. Yeah. For both of us, yeah. that they didn't feel good. I didn't feel good. So I, over time, I've just realized. Maybe they've just divorced their husband. Maybe they've just, something really bad has really happened, but they're in the class and they're here yeah. moving a little bit. And that is, that might be incredible for them. Yeah. So I've learned, I've learned the hard way. I've messed it up oh. as a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's when you learn not to do it again. Yeah, you learn not to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Then you've got much more practical oh, question. Yes, yes. <laughs> I might as well ask it. So Go on, shoot. Mel and Mel and I, Mel, who I met in Thailand on yoga teacher training, are now mm -hmm. very good friends. But we're having oh, this yeah. head mess in the meadows. Head mess. Head mess. What is it? So things like bird of paradise. Yeah. As bird an of example. Paradise. Yeah. Where you've got. I don't. I'm not going to talk in technical terms because it's still morning. But when you have your leg out to the side, but mm -hmm. also extended. Mm -hmm. What? So. I think we both had this experience that fair enough you can get leg bent. Yeah. It's the same in, in arm balances with a similar thing, but mm -hmm. how do you actually get your legs straight? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> like what on earth? Yeah. I think we were both sitting there going, it's not just hamstrings. No, it can't be just hamstrings because I can do this with my hamstrings. Mm -hmm. So it must be mm -hmm. more complicated. It could you could be you could have tight hamstrings. Yeah. Um, but you can do triangle pose. Yes. I, I know you can do triangle pose. You can do Side side angle pose. Yeah. Arjva Konasana. Yeah. Uh, I th there are a couple of things you could. So what's going to help you extend the leg, the muscles on the other side is your glute muscles. Mm -hmm. So they could be when you're standing up and you're fighting gravity, you've now got to lift your leg up. And that's a lot of uh -huh. glute muscle strength as you abduct to go up to the side. So yeah. it could be that um, and that's not easy and mm. uh, you're balancing and all the rest of that jazz um, but the other thing so that's half of the thing the other thing which could take place is that you just um, cannot um, to straighten your leg you're gonna have to bring your leg out in flexion and abduction more so you're gonna have to bring it out so if it's my left leg I'm gonna have to bring it closer to my body in my left ear mm -hmm. and you the shape of your hip socket might not allow that mm. to happen anymore. So in uh, my yin yang, uh, yin teacher training brain switches on, you could be hitting compression in your left acetabulum when you lift your leg up and flex it more. Uh, okay. That's possible. So it's just about the extended movement is maybe, maybe too much. Maybe limited. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that would be my other obvious go-to, mm -hmm. but equally you and Mel could be right. You could just be tightening your hamstrings. You're a runner, <laughs> and right? So like, it's not just that. It can't it's just not just that. your hamstrings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. do it. You've got a pretty decent forward fold. I remember. Yeah. Mm? Yeah. 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 Does the job. So go on, uh, go out and try that. And okay. 
see what happens. Send, you... send me a photo. <laughs> Probably yeah. not. But... No? <laughs> <laughs> but Lucy, it's been an absolute ple pleasure <laughs> having you. Thank you very, very much for sharing your story. Mm. Um, I, I think people will find it super inspiring. That's why I wanted you to have you on. And um, uh, if, uh, if, if uh, anyone wants in Edinburgh to know uh, Lucy No Lotus <laughs> Yoga. That's the one. Yeah. Uh, Googleable. Uh, I guess so. I think so. I think yeah, we can must try be. That. Yeah. Must be. Um, she's around and uh, she doesn't teach in a cold church no, hall and no candles. No cold church hall. There are artificial candles. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Battery powered ones. Battery yeah. powered ones. <laughs> Have a great day. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I will certainly see you around. Uh, yes. Here in bright Edinburgh. Here in sunny Edinburgh. Mm. Bye bye. Bye-bye.